all Swift UI layout happens in three simple steps, and understanding these steps is the key to getting great layouts every time. The steps are first, a parent view proposes a size for its child. Second, based on that information, the child then chooses its own size, and the parent must respect that choice. Then third, the parent then positions the child in its coordinate space. Behind the scenes, SwiftUI performs a fourth step. Although it stores positions and sizes as floating point numbers, when it comes to rendering, SwiftUI rounds off any pixels to their nearest values so our graphics remain sharp. Those three rules might seem simple, but they allow us to create hugely complicated layouts where every view decides how and when it resizes without the parent having to get involved. To demonstrate these rules in action, I'd like you to modify the default SwiftUI template to add a background modifier like this. Background color.red. You'll see the background color sits tightly around the text itself. It takes up only enough space to fit the content we provided. Now think about this question. How big is content view? As you can see, the body of content view, the thing that it renders, is some text with a background color. And so the size of content view is exactly and always the size of its body. No more and no less. This is called being layout neutral. Content view doesn't have any size of its own and instead happily adjusts to fit whatever size is needed. Back in project three, I explained to you that when you apply a modifier to a view, we actually get back a new view type called modified content, which stores both our original view and its modifier. This means when we apply a modifier, the actual view that goes into the hierarchy is the modified view, not the original one. In our simple background example, that means the top level view inside content view is the background, and inside that is the text. Backgrounds are layout neutral, just like content view, so it will pass on any layout information as needed. You can end up with a chain of layout information being passed around until a definitive answer comes back. If we put this into the three-step layout system, we end up with a conversation a bit like this. So if the UI says, hey, content view, you have the whole screen to yourself. How much of it do you need? So the parent view proposes a size. The content view replies, well, I don't care. I'm layout neutral. Let me ask my child. Hey, background, you have the whole screen to yourself. How much of it do you need? Again, the parent view proposes a size. The background says, well, I also don't care. I'm layout neutral too. Let me ask my child. Hey, text, you can have the whole screen to yourself. How much of it do you need? Again, the parent view proposes a size. The text now says, well, I have the letters hello world in the default font. So I need exactly X pixels width by Y pixels height. I don't need the whole screen, just that. So the child chooses its size. The background then says, Got it. Hey, content view, I need X by Y pixels, please. The content view then says, right on. Hey, Swift UI, I need X by Y pixels. And Swift UI says, nice. Well, that leaves lots of space, so I'm gonna put you at your size in the center. And that's the parent positioning the child in its coordinate space. So when we say text, hello world, background color red, the text view becomes a child of its background. SwiftUI effectively works its way from bottom to top when it comes to a view and its modifiers. Now consider this layout. I'm gonna add padding 20 between the background and the text. This time the conversation is more complicated. Padding no longer offers all its space to its child, because it needs to subtract 20 points from each side to make sure there's enough space for the padding. Then, when the answer comes back from the text view, padding adds 20 points on each side to pad it out as requested. So it's more like this. So if UI says, well, you can have the whole screen, how much would you want content view? Content view says, you can have the whole screen, how much would you want background? Background says, you can have the whole screen, how much would you want padding? And padding says, you can have the whole screen minus 20 points on each side, how much would you want text? Text says, I need X by Y. Padding then says, I need X by Y, plus 20 points on each side, which goes up to the background, and up to the content view, and then SwiftUI says, okay, I'll send to you. If you remember, the order of our modifiers matters. That is, this code and this code yield two different results. 
Hopefully now you can see why. Background is layout neutral, so it determines how much space it needs by asking its child how much space it needs and using that same value. If the child of background is a text view, then the background will fit snugly around the text. But the child is padding, then it receives back the adjusted values that include the padding amount. There are two interesting side effects that come as a result of these layout rules. First, if your view hierarchy is wholly layout neutral, then it will automatically take up all available space. For example, shapes and colors are layout neutral. So if your view contains a color and nothing else, it will automatically fill the screen like this. I'll just put color.red into the body. Remember, color.red is a view in its own right, but because it's layout neutral, it can be drawn at any size. When we use it inside background, the abridged layout conversation worked like this. The background says, hey text, you can have the whole screen. How much of that do you want? The text says, I need X by Y points. I don't need the rest. The background then says, okay, hey, color.red, you can have X by Y points. How much of that do you want? Color.red says, I'm layout neutral, so X by Y points sounds good to me. The second interesting side effect is one we faced earlier. If we used frame on an image that isn't resizable, we get a larger frame without the image inside changing size. This might have been confusing before, but it makes absolute sense once you think about the frame as being the parent of the image. Content view offers to frame the whole screen. The frame reports back that it wants 300 by 300. The frame then asks the image inside it what size it wants. The image, not being resizable, reports back a fixed size of 64 by 64, for example. The frame then positions that image in the center of itself. When you listen to Apple's own Swift UI engineers talk about modifiers, you'll hear them refer to them as views. They'll say the frame view, the background view, and so on. I think that's a great mental model to help understand exactly what's going on. Applying modifiers creates new views rather than just modifying existing views in place.